Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. My gosh, that's so loud for this early in the morning. And good morning. This is the award-winning In Wheel Time car talk show. We're not winning any awards on the audio side, but hey, it's just a car show. Just ahead, Richard Tomlin, Apex Auto Works on SCCA. You'll hear my thoughts on a week driving the GMC Denali Ultimate. And Jeff has what's on automotive TV this week. I just renamed it. I I know that you didn't even know that. It's your show. You can name it whatever you want. Okay. Well, thank you very much. (laughs) I don't know what I've done here, but... Anyway, everything seems very loud. Yeah, point. it is. I'm not sure why. I'm well, going to pull my mic t- back. Let's turn it back just a little bit. I just did, so you don't, okay. don't You're fine with your All right. Mic. Very good. Hello and good morning, everybody. Along with Mike out of This World Mars, we always need more Jeff Zeke, and I'm Don Armstrong. Glad you could join us here on this rainy, cloudy, gloomy, muggy, yucky. <laughs> Come on. Overcast. I'm, I'm trying to think of something I could oh say God, on the air. Go back to sleep over there. <laughs> <laughs> my mom might be listening, so I got to be careful. Oh, hi, well, mom. That's a that's a that's hello, scary right Mike's there. mom. Well, you she's, better be. She's still looking. When she overheard part of our conversation the other day. We were sitting at the table. Donna and I were talking on the phone, and she shot me a look like, "Boys, what are y'all doing?" Well, that's what mothers do. Exactly. All right. Well, uh, we are here, and uh, Richard and, Tomlin is here with us this morning. From Apex Auto Works, Richard, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, guys. Sorry about the volume. Well, no, that, that that's on our end. But uh, thank oh, you. Good. It's thank not you. my fault this time. <clears throat> so who do you have with you there? Um, I've got Kyle with me from the Alvin VFW. How are you all doing? Well, we're doing very well. Thank you very much for asking. Um, uh, so what's going on at the VFW? Well, <laughs> go ahead. This morning we're having a little uh, get-together fundraiser donating event. Um, we knew more car people than anything else, so we told the car people to show up, donate 100 bucks to help them get rebuilt. Um, there have been some challenges going on at this uh, hall, um, as we would call it, and the quickest way to get fundraisers to show up was invite them to bring their cars out. Well, this is, a great, this is a great weather day to bring your car out. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a slow start to the morning. It was a little, uh, a little damp down here in Alvin for sure. Yeah. So we've got a section for amphibious vehicles. Amphibious vehicles, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> that, that would work as well. Yeah, those with the big rain tires on mm-hmm. them. I got you. Well, uh, so what, what, what's happened at the VFW that uh, we need to have a fundraiser? Well, about uh, about four years ago, we started a remodeling project, and it's it's taken some time to get through. We haven't fully completed any of the the projects yet. But why One not? Because out. you know your mother always said you need to finish what you start. You bet. <laughs> yeah. One fire after another keeps popping up, and uh, it's it's been a case of two steps forward, one and a half steps back yep. for quite a while now. So we're uh, we're. Doing a big drive to get some stuff taken care of, though. It's almost an 80-year-old building. It's never been touched, uh, never been adequately remodeled. Nothing's well, up to code. Now, wait so. just a minute. Let's let's just go back just a minute. It's an 80-year-old building. My God, you, yeah. you, you, 80-year-old things don't necessarily have one foot in the grave, and I'm here to prove that. <laughs> <laughs> How many members in, well, the, in the hall? Uh, we've got about... 45 members at this post okay uh roughly 45 members at this post and we we see about 15 to 20 on a rotating regular basis uh you know due to work and other commitments it, it's it's hard for everybody to get up here all at one time but so we got a good group of guys so here. you know that you you've you've pulled in the best of the best when you call, talk about car guys coming to the rescue oh yeah oh yeah I'm are you aware. are you are you a car guy yourself uh, I can't afford to be as much of a car guy as I want to be, but yeah. Well, none no, of us can afford children. it. None of us can afford he, it. We, on the children. Yeah. We just hang out with Richard. He's got all kinds of excess cars. So yeah, I, I, was it, I, I was it, cars. yeah, was it one of the deals that y'all were trying to do was trying to get more accommodating to, um, let's shall we say handicapped veterans? Yeah. Like, the, the ADA part of this was a huge part of the endeavor. And I think that's probably to me the most touching part of course it ties into my hands-on driving academy with the uh, disabled veterans mm-hmm. and we didn't have a disabled veterans uh, bathroom here so we didn't have a place for them to actually come in and use a facility so this is part of the big growth that we're seeing in our alvin hall to uh, actually accommodate our veterans so and challenges 
And then while y'all were trying to do that, it's whenever the storm came through and created some damage in addition, isn't it? Yes, sir. Storm came through and uh, the wind dragged basically the entire ceiling uh, down in the hall uh, all at once, one end to the other. We walked in on a Monday morning and ceiling was laying on the floor. Well, wow. isn't, isn't yeah, that the new stylish thing to do without the, the, open, the, the false ceiling? and just The open go, concept. Yeah. Well, we can yeah. see the beams and the, and the air Real conditioning pipes concept. and stuff. <laughs> you know, a little black paint take care of that instantly. Yeah, that's the new style. Of course, you know, when it's 108 degrees outside, eh, maybe not so much. Mm-hmm. Right, right, yeah. right, right. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, and that's, that's commonplace down here in Texas, you know. Yes, yeah, so as we know, we suffered through that this past and summer. Richard mentioned ADA. That's Title Three of the United States. You have to have over 15 people. You have to have all the ADA considerations for a building if you're going to use it. You could donate the uh, signs. Well, we could we could talk about that. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, this building was built in 1940, so there wasn't a whole lot of considerations for that at that point in time. So things have changed dramatically um, over the last 80 years. Yeah, no doubt. Hopefully for the better. Yeah. Oh, absolutely for the better. Um, yeah. Well, um, Alvin's a community south of Houston and uh, a small community, but very tight knit community. Got a pretty good restaurant down there that Richard sent me to. One. What was the name of that place, Richard? McDonald's. Gordon Street Tavern. <laughs> Gordon Street Tavern. Thank you. Yes, Shut up, Jeff. It's more of a restaurant <laughs> than a tavern, but they call it Gordon Street Tavern. Gordon Street being the main street through Alvin. Um, so easy to get to. Richard, were you born and raised in Alvin? Is that why you're down there? Uh, I was not, but got here as quickly as I could. Yeah. Where, where were you born and raised, Richard? Um, Kansas for 16 years, then North Carolina, then Oklahoma, then Kansas. Been here for 25 now. Okay. I good. like it. Yeah. Well, we know we, did, we, we didn't hear that Texas accent, you know, so I figured you weren't from these parts. That or running from the law. I've been taking lessons from you. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Good. <laughs> All right, so let's let's talk just briefly about uh, uh, the SCCA and what's going on with that. You know, racing season is just about to commence, and uh, yeah. we're all kind of looking forward to that. Yeah, we are uh, off to NOLA in two weeks, um, New Orleans uh, Motorsports Park. Um, one, we call one of our flat tracks, but a very fast track. Indy, uh, Champ, Lemons, uh, everybody runs there. The vintage Trans Am, the modern Trans Am cars run there. So great facility. Three regions of Texas coming together. We should have over 150, 160 cars out there running. Wow. And that's going to be in Indy or New Orleans? New Orleans. It's a New Orleans track, but Indy cars actually run there as well. That's why I, I throw see. the Indy name out there. I got you. Yeah, that's a, right. I've been on that track twice. It's really, really what nice. What are you doing over there? I was over there for <laughs> a car event, and it just they happened to have it on that track. It and, blossomed. And I, I got kicked off the track. <laughs> I couldn't. They kept saying, go yeah, faster, go actually. faster, and I kept going faster, and I kept going off the track, and they finally said, you're out of here. What were you driving? <sighs> I don't even remember. He doesn't I remember. Wanted, that was a long time ago. Something he can't control. Oh, if it's over two days ago, I forgot. Okay. All right. Well, we got that. Uh, do you have anything local for SCCA, Richard? Um, local right now, we are kicking off our rally program again for 2024. We had some challenges 2023 with rain. I think we had six events in a row that were rained out. Um, it was just a wet year. Um, and when you're playing in the dirt, you don't want it that wet. So, uh, rally cross programs kicking off again in two weeks. And then of course we've got our solo events, our autocross events that happen the, uh, first Sunday of the month. So hmm. that one, uh, just happened last week and more of those coming 13 of those scheduled this year. So if I've got a, <clears throat> a, a mudder truck, you know, one that's 10, 20 years old, <clears throat> and I don't mind getting it dirty. I could come out to uh, where you are today at the VFW. Where is the VFW Hall down there? We're located at 812 South Douglas Street in Alvin, Texas. Wait a minute. 812 South South Douglas. Yes, sir. 812 South Douglas. Or you use Waze and type in VFW Alvin, and it'll bring you right to us. Okay. Well, that's good. So we stop by, and I mean, um, do we have anything to eat down there? No, but we got Gordon Street Tavern just down the street. Guess where we'll be at 11 o'clock. <laughs> okay. And they're giving it's a come and go event. Come and go as you want today. Stop in, say hello. Um, you can find places to donate online at my webpage, my Facebook page, or their Facebook page. Or what's you your, your, what's your Facebook page? Who's your face? Yours? Mine? I don't, I don't know. Who, what, what, 37. <laughs> say that again. Alvin VFW post 5237 on Facebook. Okay. 
And on the web, we're at alvinvfw.org. You can donate at both places. Okay. Very good. All right. Hey, Kyle, what is your last name for my notes? My last name is Swaggered on social media. My my name is Kyle Wayne uh, on Facebook, but my full name is Kyle Swaggered. Thank and you, what's sir. your social security number? <laughs> ABC <laughs> yeah, yeah. XYZ no. Yeah. We, we got it. We got it. Very good. Well, uh, gentlemen, uh, it's great to talk to you, and we thank you very much for joining us. And uh, we're going to send all of our friends that are – uh, currently with us down to Alvin this morning. It's a good, a good, nice little trip. As you're headed down to Mardi Gras, go down Highway 6 to get down there, and you'll pass right through Alvin. But yep. don't pass through. Stop off on Douglas Street and uh, give them 10 bucks or something. 812. Hey, uh, be- beads are welcome. Yeah, if somebody wanted to, if somebody wanted to just make a donation, you know, to kind of help out a little bit, what? Wow, well, we just gave that we just information. Gave the, we just gave that. I know, but if you don't want to go down there, I mean, if you just wanted to call and we just gave yeah, that on Facebook, whips, yeah, all that. Yeah. It's been two days already. Slap, darn, <laughs> yeah. it's okay. I guess <laughs> apparently I it's just. It's all there. It's go all back there. in audio, guys. It's there. We appreciate anything you guys can do to help us out, uh, listeners and staff. Thank you for taking the time to chat with us today. Well, it's a pleasure always, and uh, we'll stay in touch. You guys do the same. Thank appreciate you very it. much, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay. All right. Mar- Mar- was he asleep over there? I think so. I guess. I was writing stuff Shh, down. Post sleeping. 5237 and 812 South Douglas, but I missed, and I heard the stop by on the way to the Mardi Gras, but that's just as far just, as I got. Just go to VFW and then look up VFW. Uh, 5237. Or Alvin. In Alvin, Texas, and it'll take you there, and you can make Very a Very good. Hate begging for money this early in the morning, but whatever. Well, they need it, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, that's not unfortunate. I mean, we all need money. It's all a good yeah. thing. Did you know that you can get permanent, beautiful new teeth in 24 hours? Just got a commercial on my cell phone. <laughs> oh, very good. It really ticks me off. Getting that for Valentine's Day? or? Uh, yeah, new teeth. Yeah. Set of new teeth. Red ones. Red ones <laughs> with hearts <laughs> in, in them. <clears throat> all right. Uh, we have things to talk about today. Yes, yes. And I thought that... Uh, I thought we were going to go to break. Well, uh, we it's not time yet. Okay, okay. You, uh, I'm let, ready, man. Let I'm me ready. worry about I'm that. I'm going okay. to break. I know that. I'm going to break. I see that. Got to hold him back. <laughs> hold, hold him back. I got a new schedule and I want to use it. <laughs> yes, I, I've done some work this, and I've thrown. You Jeff, certainly have. I've uh, thrown Jeff a, a wrench that he. I don't know whether he's going to be a ten millimeter it. socket. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly 60% of electric vehicle customers would switch brands to gain better vehicle connectivity, according to a January report by the consulting firm McKinsey & Company. This is interesting. Hmm. McKinsey's survey of more than 1,600 customers in China, Germany, and the U.S. asked about 39 different connectivity features in areas including safety, autonomous driving, and infotainment. 38% of consumers for all vehicle segments in the U.S., including combustion engine vehicles, said they would be willing to switch brands for better connectivity. 55% of Chinese customers said that, and 57% of battery electric customers across regions were willing to make a switch. Hmm. So much for brand loyalty anymore. That doesn't mean anything any longer. The findings present both a challenge and an opportunity for legacy automakers in the U.S., On one hand, Chinese automakers are setting new standards in connectivity, the survey said. Chinese companies include many connectivity features in their base configurations. Connected car services like Audi Connect and BMW Connected Drive perform well among consumers, and Tesla has built a reputation for smoothly integrated software. But the findings suggest that consumers are open-minded and will flock to the brand with the best connected car services. And I have to throw in here that I'm currently driving a car that is okay. It's the color of my shirt. <clears throat> mm, almost. That. Yeah. But last week I was driving a Mazda that has the most confusing and messed up infotainment system of any car that I have driven that you have to pay a lot of money to buy. Well, you talked about brand loyalty. I'm brand loyalty to General Motors. I've got friends that are brand loyal to Ford and what respect for Mopar. 
But you also have to look at nowadays what is going to be beneficial for your usage. What are you using the vehicle for? What is your need out of that vehicle? And that's where the brand loyalty shifts. I think that a lot of it has to do with age. Mm-hmm. If you're younger, I don't think that there is anything going on to motivate anybody to buy, you know, a Ford Mustang or uh, any other kind of Ford for mm-hmm. that matter. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that uh, anybody would go to Cadillac that's, you know, 30 years old. That just I just don't see that. Maybe they would. Well, depending on what, what they're looking for in that brand. Because well, you've got a lot of General Motors, Cadillac specific. You've got high, it's a high-end vehicle with performance. Well, here, here's the big thing right now. The dough. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, the automakers have raised the price of everything. Mm-hmm. Not that the grocery store hasn't either, but... You know, the average price of a new car is forty grand. Mm-hmm. Forty on, on average, yeah. and just a few years ago, it was thirty. Yeah, that's a lot of dough. That's ten extra doughs. Mm-hmm. Let me finish this story. Sure, got to take a break. McKinsey's findings buck the conventional wisdom around connectivity. For example, automakers have created a cautionary tale from the backlash to BMW's effort to put heated seats behind a subscription in some countries, a controversial attempt to generate revenue. Many customers strongly dislike automakers' native infotainment centers. I'm sorry. There I am. Critics (laughs) pan General Motors' decision to ditch the smartphone mirroring tools Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Auto and new model EVs as a stealthy plan to subscription revenue for customers already fatigued by Netflix and Spotify. Hello, yeah. Don Armstrong. Mm-hmm. For yeah. one thing, survey respondents expressed interest in purchasing bundled options rather than single features. Bundling popular features like infotainment with connected services in other areas can increase rates of adoption and upsell single items, the survey said. And consumers are attracted to the simplified purchasing experience for bundles. Customers also want to try out features and know they can bail on a subscription after a few months. They prefer subscription payments to one-time payments. As for smartphone mirroring, He said drivers expect their phones to be compatible with their vehicles and incompatibility will be a factor in not buying a vehicle that you're interested in. Today's phones have the edge. They can be personalized and provide a better integrated experience across applications and functions, including scheduling and listening to music. Mm -hmm. Ford Motor Company plans some big cost cuts as part of a drive to boost profitability and beat back inflation. And I've got more on this coming yep. up, including removing some ballyhooed features from its vehicle, like automated parallel parking. I remember when it first came out, I was amazed that it could do that. We don't have a lot of parallel parking here. I've never no, been in a vehicle uh, that did that, and I've never experienced someone doing that. It's, it's truly amazing. Is it, does it you, actually you, work? You turn it on, and you go down the row of cars that are parked, and it finds an open spot, and it goes, beep. You stop the car and then hit the go button, and it does the whole thing for you. It backs in six inches within the curb, doesn't hit the car behind you, doesn't See, hit the car in front of you. It blows my mind because I would think the car. Yeah, you're saying it, it will do that <laughs> yeah, well, if it needs to. Yeah. It I've will just never not, seen it. It will not hit another car. No, no. Well, I mean, it, thinking, will, it will back up and yes, go forward as many times as it needs to. That would to be my apprehension of that thing busting a fender open. Yep. Um, it, it, all of this adds up uh, to a savings in order of $10 million a year for the automaker that decided to not do the parallel parking mm-hmm. thing, and that would be Ford. Uh, referring to Ford's active park assist and automated steering feature, which debuted more than a decade ago, it was designed to ease what Ford once concluded in a study with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology to be among the most stressful driving activities. I know when you took your driving test, that was one thing. You better not hit the other car. Well, and you better be able to get six inches within the curb. Good. Kylie's got to do the parallel parking when she takes her uh, yeah. test. Okay. So there you go. There you have it. Okay, um, we're going to come back after a quick break here on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show, and we're going to have our uh, review of the GMC Denali Diesel and what's on TV. It's right after these messages. Oh, 
Well, I have to turn that on, okay? So you're just going to have to give me just a second. Now. Pro-Am Auto Accessories has been serving Houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984, providing world-class products for sports cars, European sedans, and American muscle. Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk-in storefront includes an 8,000 square foot warehouse, showroom, and installation bays. Pro-Am not only sells parts and accessories, but also offers installation and service. Pro-Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through Pro-Am.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro-Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro-Am will lend you a hand. Pro-Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge and Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713-781-7755. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? In Wheel Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV, but we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit godsgarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at godsgarage.org. Welcome back to the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show, uh, and uh, we appreciate you joining us today. Jeff has what's on oh, TV. What's on TV. Here you go. So we're going to start with um, NHRA. We're going to do some racing stuff. NHRA starts uh, March 9th, which is not too far around the corner. They're going to be in Gainesville, and that's going to be on FS1. Uh, you've got NASCAR coming up this week. you got the big race. You've got uh, the clash of the Coliseum was last weekend. you got dual number one and dual number two coming in on Thursday. They start at 7 p.m. on FS1. Tickets are still available. And then you got the big Daytona 500 on Sunday at 2.30 start time, or coverage start time. Uh, that's Eastern on uh, February 18th, and that's on Fox regular channel. So I completely missed the clash at the Coliseum. You didn't miss anything, and there's all kinds of controversy. Oh, we like it, we hate it. You, drivers so, are crying and it's so stupid. fighting. And I all don't this understand. Stuff. They've I got know. racetracks all over the United States, yep. and they make so much money apparently that they got that kind of money to spend to transform the Olympic-sized stadium in Los Angeles yep. into a racetrack. It's so dumb. I don't. I don't understand it. But the duels are coming up. Those are always fun to watch. You know, and that's uh, in Daytona. In Daytona. Yep, yep absolutely. Right. Starts Thursday. Time now for this hour's car review. Had a chance to drive the 2024 GMC Sierra. It's available in no less than eight, count them, eight trim levels. Starts with the Pro, which I find is interesting because, you know, uh, Toyota has a Pro model in the Tundra. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we're talking about the Sierra here. This is uh, the pickup truck. Starts with the Pro, goes to the SLE, then to the Elevation, then the SLT, the AT4, the AT4X, sure, the, morning, Den the Denali, and the Denali Ultimate. So if you can't find a trim level, then you need to go to somebody else yeah. because they got eight of them. You get a bunch. Uh, the review trim level is the 1500 Denali Ultimate Diesel Crew Cab with the short box. I can't even get that on one line. No. This is called a standard pickup truck, according to your U.S. government. Passengers and driver, five all together. The Pro will seat six with the front bench. Understand that the Pro is the work truck. Okay. Right. In, in, some, in some levels, they call it the WT. Oh, yeah. The work truck. Work truck. Work truck. All right. That's the stripper model in our language. I like stripper better than work truck. <sighs> Why don't they just name it that? And put too that, many letters. And put that and put <laughs> and put that girl that you know does one of those poses with their legs. Oh yeah, like you see on, on the, the back, back of the mud flaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the back of mud flaps. That's what I. I'm, That's an actual girl of, of of silhouette of an actual girl. Okay. 
I read that somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I've heard, huh? God. Back to the review. <laughs> All right. No changes, really, uh, to speak of from last model year. Um, the options include three cabs, a regular, a double, and a crew. Three beds, depending on the cab, and four engines. Wow. That's a variety. Lot. That's like 10, 10 different things that you can get. Here, here's the deal. If you're going to spend $80,000, or in this case, $85,000 on a truck, order it. Mm-hmm. That way, if you want a different rear axle in there yeah. with different gear ratios, you yes. can get that. If you Whatever cab, whatever you want. Order it the way that you want it because you're spending eighty five grand. Mm-hmm. Okay, exterior features. This is a gargantuan half ton pickup truck that will probably not fit in anybody's garage. So take that into consideration. Yeah, this, huge. Would, this would be one of those deals where you'd want to go ahead and have a car port made in front of the garage because it ain't fitting in the garage. Massive chrome grill with a hockey stick uh, side slathering on there. Uh, Daytime running lights on it that also kind of mirrors that hockey stick thing. Uh, we had a huge 20-inch smoky chrome wheel option. Well, retractable running boards is a nice feature, what I liked. The subtle body side sculpting, I like that. I uh, also enjoyed the multi-pro multi, multi uh, pro tailgate that comes with the Denali Ultimate trim. So they've included that Used to be 10000 I don't know how much the thing cost. Uh, a lot of money yeah. to have that multi-pro. But that's the way to go with that tailgate. Absolutely. Um, what could use improvement? I, I don't know. They've thrown the kitchen sink at this thing. You could probably order that too. Interior highlights. Well laid out dash with conservative instrument cluster pod. Big infotainment screen now that's easy to maneuver through. Top-notch leather seating with adjustability. Big shift knob on the console. Uh, takes up too much room, period. Okay. Gobs of cubbies and storage throughout the cabin. What I liked about it, the attention to the detailed stitching and the ultimate badging that's also on the seat. What could use improvement? Nothing. This is GM at its best. Three-liter inline six-cylinder diesel engine, 305 horsepower, but 495 pound-feet of torque with a 10-speed automatic transmission. Towing, 8,700 pounds, hauling, 1,380. 23 miles per gallon city, 27 on the highway for combined to 24. I got 25.4 miles per gallon over 451.8 miles. If you're going to keep this thing for a while, you'll probably get your money back on the up pricing on the diesel engine. What I liked about it, smooth, quiet power with big, big torque. And what could use improvement? Nothing. Engine rocks is my note. Hmm. Ride and handling, smoother than you would think for this massive thing. Uh, The tester was unloaded. In other words, I wasn't hauling anything and I wasn't towing anything. What could use improvement? Um, Suspension adjustability. Um, Base trim price, (laughs) 82.5. Prices tested 85.4. Uh, base model price forty three four for the pro entry level version. The other entry level versions include the Ford F one fifty starting at forty three five, the Ram fifteen hundred for forty one three, and the Toyota for forty two. So, and that's my review of the twenty twenty four GMC Sierra Denali Ultimate fifteen hundred diesel crew cab with the short box. <laughs> The only thing that does not appeal to me on that vehicle is the grill. It's, it's, they never have, through the whole life of that GMC version, the grill is my issue. I agree with you. If you'd like to get in touch with us, shoot us an email. The address here is info at inwheeltime.com. We are back after this quick break. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 of the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katie. 
Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortillum College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tent, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Music. Keep listening, and we'll see you soon.